Recording starting. Hey, hi everybody. This is Tori Wheel. We're reporting live from the floor of Java One and it's pretty exciting. I'm a developer advocate at New Relic and I have the distinct pleasure of talking to Joe Lacasio. Hey Joe. Hey, how's it going Tori? Pretty good. What do you do at New Relic? Uh, I'm, I'm a dude. Uh, I generally <laughs> float around and do stuff. Okay, I, I love interviewing random white dudes. So, um, <laughs> Tell me, Happy random, to be here as a yeah, random white tell dude. Yeah, tell me, random white dude, what the heck is this new relic thing, and what does it do, and why should anybody care? Well, in a DevOps culture, uh, the DevOps engineering managers need to have KPIs, right, for their team. Okay. So, what are you driving your team towards? Are you driving them towards lower error rates? Or are you driving them towards a revenue generation with the new features that they're developing? Or oh, I want everything always <laughs> immediately. Always, right? that all makes the time. Me a good manager, right? <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> this dashboard that I'm showing here is actually representative of some uh, KPIs that you might have for a DevOps team. Okay. And this is a one-week rolling dashboard that would show how many users are on our site interacting with our software that we're developing and releasing code to day to day. Did it change today versus yesterday? Okay. We can check the dashboard and tell. And this is real time. Okay. We could see if we have like a high rate of login errors week over week in different releases. Um, and like I said, if this is one of your KPIs, you could even track revenue in the product. Oh, interesting. So this takes years and years to set up. It's very complicated. It's really hard, right? No, no, not at all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's called a lob, people. Okay. So, so, how long does it take, honestly, to put something like this together? Honestly, this could take uh, about an hour if you're really fast and familiar with the APIs yeah, okay. to a day if you're very unfamiliar with the API. Okay. So, New Relic is, let's see, it's a SaaS-based product, right? It is, yes. And so, you drop your agent on your application and the mm -hmm. data goes up to the cloud and then this is the representation of some of that data. Is that yeah. accurate? We have okay. some default data that we collect that's, you know, transaction response times and uh, air codes and things like that. Uh, we bubble those events up and we allow you to add things like the revenue attribute to the data points. Ah, okay, so you can you get stuff out of the box, but if you want to do custom instrumentation, you can do that as well. Yeah, we call it adding custom attributes okay. to the data set. Okay, interesting. So as a Java developer, since we're at Java 1, tell me how, how does this relate to what I'm doing and is right. it important and, and what is this crazy DevOps stuff? <laughs> so That was 18 questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I like straw mans, it's fine. Okay. So um, when you're releasing Java applications into a new containerized environment, it could be very difficult to track all of the uh, statistics and re-instrument things. But New Relic makes that easy with the agent-based code level approach. You don't have to care about what is going on at the container level or what servers the containers are running on. The API is inside of the code, and then the agent is on top of your application, uh, and it can run anywhere. Okay, so this is keying in on what the application is doing, and you don't really care if it's on a VM or a, yeah. or a Docker container. Or, or whatever. even if you're running a distributed hybrid cloud, you're running right. in your data center on, uh, on your legacy environment, and you're maybe migrating V2 into Amazon or Azure or the Oracle cloud. Right, okay, very interesting. So tell me in terms of some of the interesting stories you've seen in terms of people doing their digital migration. What does that look like from monolith to microservices? It, de I it totally depends, but yeah. uh, a lot of these larger companies that we see in our market are um, trying to modernize the front end first. So they'll slap a microservice uh, API gateway on top of their legacy Java stack. Um, and that will be V1 of the upgrade. Okay. And they may do some modernization of their web front end at that point. Um, and that, that will probably involve like a single page application framework like Angular or React or Ember. Uh, and that's to get the new client experience to the market as fast as possible. Right. So it's all about speed. 
It right? is. Right, getting new functionality out to users as quickly as possible. Um, how do you see people dealing with the issue of technical debt and you know all this <laughs> legacy code they have? Can they just chuck it away or tell me, tell me what you're really seeing out in the field? Two approaches that I've seen, one of which I saw today that's just very interesting. Uh, migrating, so a customer that was migrating their WebLogic uh, instances directly to the cloud, just porting them directly over without actually changing anything. Okay. So the that's the classic uh, lift and shift. Lift and shift, yes. Right. Okay. And then the uh, the other is actually uh, migrating that code into a, a new environment, onto a new kind of application server or technology. Um, typically, you know, Tomcat servers of some kind, actually doing some level of rewrite of a of the actual application itself. Okay, so where would you recommend if somebody, I'm a Java developer, I've heard about a lot about DevOps, I've heard about microservices, I know I've got to get on this train somehow. Where do you suggest they start? Oh man, uh, <laughs> well, you can, you can start with, um, I don't really know, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> You're on your own, people. You're on um, your own. I'm sorry. That, no, you heard I, it here first. Yeah. <laughs> No, well, I can tell people that there are a lot of various resources. One, I'd suggest going to a meetup. Find a meetup. You can always uh, meetups. Look, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I knew that one. Yeah, Gosh. you look at microservices <laughs> or Docker or whatever, and just start to do your research and meet other people that are doing this. Because a lot of people are on the journey. The classic thing is how many people are running Docker. Every hand in the room goes up, and then yeah. you go in production, and then all the hands go all back down. All the hands are down. Yeah. Right. So a lot of people are on this learning journey together um, and I feel like you do have to realize that you're not a pizza delivery company you're a software company <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. I mean that's that's the reality and, and I think it's pretty exciting times for Java the Java community and software development in general I guess, right I guess actually we do have some thought leadership it, within New Relic uh, <laughs> some folks that have written uh, books about architecting at scale are right. uh, chief cloud Advisor uh, Lee Atchison. Yes. And uh, some folks that have written about how to get uh, containers into your production environment. Right. Some of our site reliability engineers, uh, Carl, uh, his last name escapes me, and um, Sean. Sean. Sean Kane. Sean Kane, there right, you go. Right, right. Docker up and running. Docker up and running, yes. Right. It's so an O'Reilly Press book. Right, because New Relic's been running Docker in production for what, two years now? For so about two years now, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've been on the bleeding edge and we've really scaled up and used it a lot and um, have some expertise around it and are glad to share that we with We like to people. think so. You know, in this application that I was showing you the dashboards for yeah. is actually completely containerized. Okay. So it in fact has a Java agent inside of the containers and uh, you can actually see the container instances here and um, we will detect that it's a container, we'll represent that in the UI, and uh, we'll also help you monitor the, the server's infrastructure. Our legacy server product, product actually monitors and detects Docker hosts. Right. And it will show you the container CPU and memory utilization uh, on the host, all of the containers in a fleet. Uh, but our new infrastructure product is actually going to supplant that functionality and is designed for dynamic infrastructure. Interesting, yeah, yeah, because that's um, the people we acquired Opsmatic, right? And yeah. now we're surfacing that functionality and it's pretty amazing and it focuses on configuration changes and all sorts of things that when you have a large fleet of servers, whether they're real or virtual, um, minor configuration changes can make big uh, cause big problems for people. Yeah, someone might log in and tweak something here, but it takes out 10% of the Docker hosts or Docker containers in that host, and right. you've just sunk the ship, Jim. She's <laughs> dead. <laughs> 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 so we're going to prevent that from happening. Um, Joe, thank you so much for coming by. It's great that you're part of the hey, Java thanks. community. Thank you, Tori. <laughs> All right. Happy yeah. to be a part of the Java community. Yeah, great. This is Tori Wheel with New Relic signing off. Stay tuned for more exciting interviews live from Java One. Pssh.